Good morning. That started a bit quicker than I expected. And welcome back to my channel and the teacher's wake up call. Uh, so it's, I, I wanted to do a hot take Tuesday yesterday, but I wasn't feeling it. And uh, so today I'm going to call it Wacky Wednesday because I'm going to talk about a bit of everything. Uh, first of all, you cannot really truly appreciate winter until you um, have to go to school when it's like minus 25 degrees Celsius, Celsius for any of, of my American brethren watching me right now, that's Celsius, minus 25 Celsius. All right, um, it's, it's, it's cold, it's bracing, it wakes you up in the morning. I can only imagine how it is for kids in school buses. It is not pleasant. So that's, that's the first wacky thought. The second wacky thought of the day um, is, it has to do with uh, um, a report that came out today um, about the amount of violence in schools. So I'm not saying that this is not newsworthy. I'm not saying that this is not worth our attention. I'm not saying that um, no lies, you know, it's not violent in schools. Yeah, no. Two weeks ago, this uh, Florida teacher got shot by uh, a kid and it was in an elementary school. Like I want to say a sixth grader, but I, I'm not 100% certain. This is, it, it's a problem. It's a problem. So when people are telling governments, yo, we need to focus on students' mental health, you think the two might be linked? Maybe instead of like teaching them verbs and, and uh, oh, what are the grade 11s doing right now? Uh, logarithmic equations, maybe, maybe we should be focusing on mental health, maybe. Maybe we should take things off of their plate and focus on their well-being. Je fais juste dire. Uh, you know, it's, it's, to me, the two are linked. And if you want, if you want schools that are less violent, you need to focus on connecting with the students and ensuring that they are well. And yes, I know there's probably a ton of other things that we have to include as well, but to me, that's, that's the first thing you need to focus on. Make sure the students are happy, make sure the students are fed, and they will be, they will be okay, okay? It's, it, it's a start, it's a start. But you know, but I've been, only been saying that for the last, I don't know, three, four, five years. Focus on mental health, focus on mental health. Um, so that's, that's the other thing. The, the last thing, and I'm gonna try and be succinct because I don't want this video to last like 20 minutes. So last week, the, um, the government and the media um, expressed their, their very serious concern about um, the results um, of the French exam in grade 11 uh, and how horrible the results are and our, our students can't write in French anymore. And I had, I had theories, ideas, but they are just ideas and theories and I didn't spend years studying this. So yesterday, instead of doing my regular hot take video, I decided to do a bit of research when I should have been doing work. But you know, I'm like that. I start, I start, um, you know, rabbit hole and I just, I just keep on going. And you know, next thing you know, I come across this interview. Now it's not, it's not a podcast, um, but it was a, a, an interview on Radio Canada. And the title of this, this radio interview is Les jeunes d'aujourd'hui ne font pas plus de fautes que dans le passé, which basically means kids aren't making more mistakes than they did in the past, which I thought was interesting because here I am looking for um, articles on the success rate of students in the past, like 30 years ago, like when I was in high school. Um, I came across, I came across a, um, a report um, that was uh, done in 1987 about how we need to change how we teach French. Ha! 
<laughs> having spent my life in schools and having seen my own daughter go through school, like I could tell you all the things that they mentioned in the report that I printed out because I want to read it more in detail. <laughs> Nothing has happened. Nothing has happened. Nothing has happened. Anywho, um, so this this radio interview by like like a reputable source like this is Radio Canada this is not like some kind of like you know offhand podcast um, or you know two bit YouTuber with 150 few 152 subscribers this is Radio Canada and the person they are interviewing is France Martineau who 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 made it her mission as a, a an educator a university professor. Um, linguistics professor at University of Ottawa to study French um, in North America. And she said that in the past, in our provincial past, um, making mistakes was commonplace. And she came across documents written by the father of Louis-Joseph Papineau, a historical figure in our province, and his text was filled with mistakes. And it was shortly after, like the mid 19th century, she says, that they started using the mastery of French language as a sign that you've made it, that you were an elite, that you were, that you, you, you were part of a certain privileged few that could master French. So, so therein, like if you were an elite, you, you understood French and you could write properly and you didn't make any mistakes. But if you were the little people, if you were, if you were the peons, if you were the peasants, you couldn't write. And, and, and you know, if you wanted to write properly, you had to do advanced studies. And those advanced studies weren't necessarily accessible to, to many people at the time. So th this is my wacky Wednesday thought. What if we are still thinking that way when it comes to French as, as, as a mother tongue, as a language? Why, what, if, what if we are still thinking that in order to define your success as an individual, you need to write in French without any mistakes. What if we still have that elitist perspective? Now, before you think that I'm trying to promote um, a, a error-filled um, language and, and not teaching my students how to write properly, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that. I'm trying to say that maybe, maybe we have that perception of that, that very erroneous perception, because we, we, we fully admit if you can't do math, well, okay, maybe you shouldn't be doing high math. Like, we've got different programs and different tiers for math, but we should maybe have different tiers and different programs for French. Maybe we should be teaching French as a second language. I mentioned that last week in my video. But what if we still have that perception that French is still seen in an elite perspective, subconsciously, obviously, subconsciously, but what if we have told ourselves, in order for you to be successful, you need to make zero mistakes in your essay? And I'm, I'm thinking about this out loud because being a French teacher, you always, when you see those results, you say to yourself, Am I doing enough as a teacher? Am I teaching them properly? Am I, am I teaching them the right things? And then you hear an interview like that by France Martineau and you, you, you rethink everything, everything and, and, and you, you are starting to wonder if we were taught wrong. Like, <laughs> this is weird. This is weird because I'm thinking about all of the students before me and, and after me, because I was lucky. I, I, I can handle French. I think I can. I mean, I'm teaching it. I guess I can. 
how did they feel knowing that they couldn't write properly? And how did others make them feel? Because right now I can only imagine how today's kids are feeling, being told, well, you know, you didn't pass your exam because oh, your content's great, mais ton texte est bourré de faute. Really? Knowing that, no one was perfect before them. So I think it's a bad thing to say that our students are doing worse than they did before. I think it's also a bad thing to say that they are not capable of success based on that. So these are my wacky thoughts on, on, on this lovely Wednesday. You know, maybe if I had a bit more caffeine in me, I wouldn't have wacky thoughts like that, but I'm having those thoughts. And I think, uh, I think those ideas are worth exploring. Um, so mental health, your success does not depend on your language skills. Uh, and it is cold outside today. It is cold. Mm. On that lovely note, folks, have yourselves a lovely day.